There's a level of admiration I actually have for China. Welcome to the LA Podcast, everyone. It's so great to have you all on one more time. It's your boy, Josh. Dalton. And we're grateful to be back on with you yet again. That was new. <laughs> <laughs> A different way to do things. I, uh, yeah, th- we posted kind of what was going on over in China on our stories, and uh, we have a lot to say about it tonight. Because there's, there's a lot to say because there's like everything you could imagine and more is going on in China right now. Exactly. Like <laughs> and, you know, and there's like some coverage of it here and there, and more and more is starting to happen with our, our kind of our core media here, which is nice to see. Um, but this, on top of what was going on in Iran, it's just like it's time to start really speaking out on these things and stop being a bunch of punks and uh, and yeah, ignoring real things it. happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, that's what's going on. So yeah, we got. We're, obviously, that's the theme of today. We're gonna head on what's going on over in China, how the communist government is treating their people, yep. and all the things that come with it. Obviously, we're going to hit on a couple lighter things, which are more in- are yeah. interesting to <laughs> chat about. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot to get into. But we got Philip behind the behind the hitting buttons. Oh yeah, well, let's go, oh, Philip. We're here. He's hitting the uh, the Movember sash. Dude, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. For once in my life, finally it looks good. It's taken <laughs> taken a couple of years to get there. But. Hey, it looks good. <laughs> yeah, let's go, mate. And uh, but we're excited to have you. Don't forget to go to shop to get your stickers, and so we continue sticking it to the man. Oh. To the CCP. <laughs> to the stick, keep sticking to the CCP, baby. And uh, there's a lot going on. We also had, oh yeah, there's pretty much the theme of today is freedom of speech. And we're going to kind of chat through that today. First off, yay, storming off a podcast though. Dude, yeah, it's officially yay, right? That's all. Yeah. It's no longer calling yay, right? No, yeah, um, that's his dead name. Right. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Yay. Yeah, this was interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the whole the whole thing was like, um, I feel like I was on like PCP. Like it was like the whole thing was like crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just seemed like. Um, what was your take? My initial take was that the in, in interviews were admittedly kind of being a little hard on him. Mm. Uh, like, my, well, just initially, I was just kind of like, like they're not like you got Kanye on a podcast and you're just trying to like get, let him talk a little. Is right. how I felt. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I don't know, I, I guess I, I regularly watch that show. So this was like, for me, I sat down one night and just turned it on and I saw you caught it, and yeah. Milo Yiannopoulos and uh, Fuentes. <laughs> I was like, whoa. That was a crazy episode. That's, that's what I mean. That's all I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. So I had to tune in for this. Um, and you're right. Like, I can see why people say, like, the interview is real hard on him. I think seeing the fallout and seeing, like, hearing their perspective on it, mm. um, they had a, a specific way they wanted to go with the show. They didn't want to get into like all the anti-Semitic stuff. They wanted to talk about what happened at the Trump dinner and why everyone blew up and this, that, the other. Yes. They want to get into that. But like what happened from what their perspective was that, yeah, kind of like derailed it right from the get go and want to get right into the anti-Semitic stuff. And that's something like the interview was just definitely disagreed with. Um, there's like, you can't just attribute all these misdealings to a group of people like that's the dangerous part of the time we're living in um, right you're not just saying the jewish people are ruling ruling our lives and you yeah. know running everything that's just not how this works and he's like you're not listening to me man and then he's you know stormed off walked off yeah but, yeah so that's so obviously you sent it to me and by that time milo was on i think when you sent it to me i think i can't remember but i didn't catch kanye live right um so right. i had to, i watched it after the fact but um yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, sorry. <laughs> I was a little thought. Um, uh, yeah, the storming off thing. I mean, it just kind of uh, it, it just detracts from Kanye again. Mm-hmm. It's like just another thing that he just can't get through. He just can't sit through. He can't hear opposing ideas, and it's just like it just makes him less credible. Oh. More every time, like it just it, tra- it just takes the credibility away from him. And that was like for me, like. Um you know, I turned it on and Kelsey walks in the room. She's like, are you for real right now? <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, what's wrong? She's like, he's anti-Semitic. And I was like, is he? 
have you seen in context stuff he's been talking about? No, he's kind of been going by off of the kind of headlines reading. He's like, yeah, like I just want to hear him speak. Then I'll make a judgment for myself if he's anti-Semitic. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. He's anti-Semitic. He's pretty anti-Semitic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and I'm glad I took the time because I wanted to hear it out. Like, I'm just done hearing things through people. I want to hear right from the... From the source. The source. Like, that's totally. what happened with uh, Andrew Tate after he got canceled off everything. He went on Patrick Bate, um, Patrick Bate da- David's show. Yeah. Um, and uh, I wanted to hear from himself. Like, it was a four-hour interview, and I wanted to hear right from, from Tate what happened, yeah. what's your perspective, and uh, what's going on. Yeah. And this is the same thing for me. And so you get, you get your answers. Oh, you definitely get your answers. A hundred percent. Because I mean, yeah, watching the Tim cast with him, it's like, yeah, yeah that was pretty anti-Semitic. Like yeah. it's, you can't really dance around that. Like mm-hmm. he, he's essentially just blaming <laughs> Jewish people <laughs> for every single mistreatment in media yeah, or every wrongdoing, every deal he didn't get was just because of Jewish people. Yeah, he was like he talked about the person who was like the right hand man to Obama, who was yes. Jewish, and then was talking about Kushner, who was right hand guy to Trump. He's like he's Jewish, and he was going after all, <laughs> all of them. And and so Tim, who's um, half Korean, half white, mm-hmm. um, he's like, well, what do you, what do you say about me then? He's like, well, God's on our side. He's like, what? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He's he's really hard to take seriously. Yeah, yeah. And so like it, that was the thing for me is uh, that's kind of that's where that's exactly the spot spot where the interview went off the rails is. Um, Tim was like, you know, you know, they don't really, you know, they treated you pretty badly, and uh, Connie's like, what do you mean by they though? And Tim's like, just the powerful people in charge. He's like. N- no, come on, man. It's okay to say it's Jewish people. <laughs> He's like, no, it's just the powerful interests that are treating you terribly. There's not just a group of people that are treating you bad, dude. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Con- and the, also beyond that, it's like the anti-Semitic stuff, I think, is uh, number one, wrong. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but number two, it's like I, I've watched him like be a pretty a bad husband, you know, a, a not an outstanding father, certainly in the public eye. And it's just like those are like tenants in my value system where i'm just like i don't respect you right you're just hard to respect in my opinion totally and so then then add on anti-semitic and i'm like what happened to kanye west from like 2005 it was just dropping music calm no drama really like the taylor swift stuff was like the biggest thing that happened right you know and now kanye west is involved in like everything that he shouldn't even be involved in (laughs) Yeah, it was. Uh, I was curious what was going him on. Him pointing with the Balenciaga stuff that was interesting, dude. That is interesting. And him like, it, it, I, okay. Here's the thing. I will say though, maybe I'm, you know, even a bit of crow. Like it took Kim Kardashian three days to post on the Balenciaga stuff, and he Kanye was was like, "Why is it taking Kim so long?" True. <laughs> and then she was like, "I wanted to get in touch with them directly and figure out why." Da 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 da. And everyone's like, "No, you were being paid to not talk." <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like actually all that stuff with you know that's that's a hard right turn there, but um, but I was reminded of the Ricky Gervais um, Golden Globe speech. Dude, this is we're living in a simulation that is controlled by Ricky. I I swear because it's like everything that's popular right now are things he's talked about. Yeah, everything that's being exposed, he like was on the forefront of it <laughs> yeah. and everyone thought he was crazy. Yeah. Well, and that was the thing is like 2020 people thought it was funny. Um, yeah, they were laughing at him. Yeah. Yeah. They're all laughing with them and everyone at home thought it was hilarious. And like, there was like a smaller group of people who was like, it's funny because it's all true. Yeah. And then you start, and now as things have, as you said, have been covered, uncovered even since 2020 where things are coming more to the forefront. Yep. And it's like, I was, I've, I, I watched that speech twice today I was like, oh, my gosh. It was right in front of our faces, and we just didn't think it was real. Like, just the um, the stuff going on in Hollywood with how the mistreatment of children, um, child pornography, all of those things. It's just like... Women, people of color, effectively anyone who's not a grown-up white man. I I disagree with that. Oh, really? Well, actually, that's actually a great point because there are actors that were kids that grew up into white men who are still yeah yeah I, well it's not even that i'm talking about oprah's part of it um wait oh you yo you're saying she's like in control no no sorry i'm not saying okay i guess we're talking about two different things yeah here. i'm just talking about hollywood as a whole 
um, where it's just rich, wealthy people oh. who, have, who, who just, who would do nefarious things, um, who Dude, are all part of 100%. it. A hundred percent. I yeah. saw a TikTok the other night and it was like, um, this guy that by chance got invited to his first LA party, like right. his first like Hollywood, the full experience. And it was like this huge ballroom of, of people and like, they were like, it was like a masquerade. Like they were all like dressed up, ma- but there was a floor. Chess for orgies. And that was like that. You could just go join. And it was upstairs. Just upstairs. Yikes. Dog. All these rich Hollywood like socialites. It was. And he was like, what, what do I do? Like uh, if you leave, you, you're you never allowed back. Like if you leave, you're like suspect now. You can't expose these people. You'll be taken out. Right. Um. But yeah, nefarious is like, cause they're so rich. It's like you run out of money. You want power. You want it. You want it like puppet master. Yeah. It's so interesting. The life of these in a bad way. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting to learn about anyway. Mm-hmm. These lives of these mega rich people. Yeah. Well, the thing that I thought was the most topical was when he went after Tim Cook. Um, and what, that's Hun- oh, Ricky. Yeah, Ricky. Oh, yeah, after yeah. Tim Cook. Yeah, and, uh, you know, talking about how they got into streaming and this and that, the other, and, um, you know, talking about all the, you know, essentially he's getting into um, how they do a lot of moral grandstanding um, with the content they put out. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's like, you know, it's, you know, we love hearing speeches from the guy who, you know, uses sweat <laughs> sweatshop labor in China um, to get their stuff done. And everyone's like, oh, <laughs> You know, and that's just like, these are the truth bombs. You just drop it on everyone. Dude. And that was the best thing about it. He was like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> the Apple stuff is so fun. Have you ever heard of the Apple Credo? Uh, no. This is like the thing that they like, will like make you read. Oh. And it's still on my phone. And make like, you believe it? It's like, a, yeah, dude, this is the whole thing. All right. So am I going to, do you have to say this every morning? Do, well, it's like they do it at events. They'll do like, okay. or, or like whatever. You can, it's online. So it's like not anything special that I have this. But yeah, so but this is what you guys would. This, this was spoken at, like, when you first get hired, they read the credo, it's in things, like, they'll use part, like, things will start with live to enrich lives, like, they'll use parts of it in a lot of their stuff. All right, All right. let's, uh, I'll read it out loud for the homies. We are here to enrich lives, to help dreamers become doers, to help passion expand human potential, to do the best work of our lives, at our best. We give more than we take, from the planet to the person beside us, we become a place to belong where everyone is welcome. Everyone, including those in China. Sorry, no, that was my part. (laughs) We draw strength from our differences. From background and perspective to collaboration and debate, we are open. We define expectations first for ourselves, then for the world, because we're a little crazy. Because good enough isn't. Because what we do says who we are. We find courage to try and, and to fail, to learn and to grow, to figure out what's next, to imagine the unimaginable, to do it all over again tomorrow. At our core, we believe our soul is our people people who recognize themselves in each other, people who shine a spotlight only to stand outside of it because people who work, people who work to leave this world better than they found it, people who live to enrich lives. Wow, that's beautiful, man. Isn't that strange? It's well written. Like, it pulls on heartstrings for sure. Yeah. But. Yeah, man. Were you supposed to have that memorized? You're two weeks in? Dude. (laughs) That's funny. Uh, no, but th- they would play quite often. I always just thought it was very like, um, like you know, you've seen Walmart's open in the morning. You've seen what Walmart's do when they open. It's like very cult-like. It just felt like another thing that was supposed to link us all into this like community. Right. Um, as if it wasn't a job. Right. So it's, so it's very interesting, yeah, how it's like companies will, you know, sort of like trick people into their mission. Mm-hmm. But like the people at the top aren't living the mission, right? You know, like not. at all. Yeah. You know, so like yeah, just said to leave the world better than we found it. How can you? How can you live by that during what's happening in China right now? Yeah. Uh, how can you? How can that be your mission statement and you not have something to say about it then? Yeah. How are you so silent? Yeah, it was. It reminds me of um, this is obviously a lighter take on it, but it's just like it, but it is real. Uh, it was an SNL skit from like 2004. Oh. And uh, and the whole joke about it was like, you know, every time um, Apple releases the new iPhone in September and 
you know and so it's like these like you know americans who are just like complaining about the newest features and like and then they like shift to the other side of the stage it's like okay we want you to keep telling us what your complaints are wow these factory workers over here tell us what life is like at the factory <laughs> and uh and just them going off it's like Oh, I'm so sorry that you're, you know, you couldn't get your feature. My family was uh, in the factory for 16 hours a day and we sleep there, <laughs> you know, and, and, but it's just like, it's all, when you look into it, it's all true though. Well, it, it, even to bring that right around to today, yeah. a lot of these protests are happening at places like Foxconn and warehouses and assembly plants because they are also being forced into COVID policy that says they can't leave. You have to live in the warehouse. Like, which is just basically, like he said, COVID's not really a big fear, at least numbers wise. It's just a way to lock people in the warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was thrown off the other day because I was seeing all these notifications for our Fox contact tech talk that we did like months ago. Oh yeah. You mentioned that was coming around again. Yeah. And hit another hundred, another hundred thousand plays, and I was like, "Why?" And that's when I got my caught my attention. Everything that was going on over in China, it's like you know, I was time like, appropriate. Yeah, I'm like, "Oh, this is why it's doing the rounds again on TikTok." Um, wild. So we'll get to, we'll get to it. But there's a couple things we want to hit on first. First, Fortnite's got taking an issue with Apple. Yes. Nothing like doing a parody of a parody. Okay, I love it. Commercial. Here we go. One other thing before this does start playing that just popped into my mind. Do you think it's suspect how much TikTok is allowing us to see about what's happening in China? A little bit. Like, why are they letting us see so much? For an app that's owned by China, you'd think we would never see it on the app. Yeah, I am intrigued by that. I've always wondered that today. Like, why are we seeing so much? And it's like... Because, like... Cause like <sighs> everything else they censor. There's nothing else that I could really, like, really wrap my head around because... All it does is it would demoralize their country more and it bolsters us. Like, you know, I'm sure the CCP loved seeing all the BLM protests and riots that were taking place in the States and seeing it all fall Watching apart. Watching it crumble, yeah. You know, I'm not going to lie. There's actors here that are happy. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm one of the people who's, I'm excited to see the people rise up and fight against that, in that government. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see it, but yeah. I just don't know what the benefit would be for them to allow us to see it i guess is my question exactly that's where i get caught up mm -hmm. they're way too calculated yeah as a company tiktok mm -hmm. to you know it's just weird why we're for some reason this is okay but like <laughs> like videos about my own government don't make it onto my for you page you know right. it's like, why are these being pushed to me mm. so interesting yeah it's I mean, maybe we're being too conspiratorial. I don't know, um, but it, like, it did, pa it did pass my mind. Yeah. So maybe yeah. someone inside Tech Talks is like, "You're going to spread this message." Right. Oh, right. Oh. oh. You know. Yeah. Screw the CCP. Yeah, that's an interesting. Uh, listen, th like you said, this will be a what you say, like a, a World War Three would be like digital. Yeah. And this could be it. Who knows? There's whistleblowers everywhere. Yeah. Wild. All right. All right. Let's do it. Fortnite. Here we go. I love Fortnite. <laughs> remember this no we talked about this on the show like two years ago fortnite and apple oh yeah i remember the original yeah. oh yeah. yeah so that was that commercial was done for it's just getting popular now yeah but um but like it was interesting to see fortnite do a parody of a parody yes you know obviously that was a, a rip off of the apple commercial i got them really famous back in the in the 80s um and then that, because that commercial is a parody of the 1984 movie. Um, so it's just really interesting to see it all come full circle. Absolutely. And it's a good message. Yeah. But like they also did that. Yeah. You know? Um, and, for, and Fortnite is still not available on, on iPhone. Still not, eh? No. 
Gee. At least to my knowledge, I I have not been able to find it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. All because they wanted like uh, he had so interesting. Oh, it's because the payment structures. Right? Yeah, because you would pay in the app, mm-hmm. but like actually through the app, yeah. you wouldn't go to like Apple oh. subscriptions and then buy Apple it. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is odd because there's a lot of apps that do that. Like I find that there's some apps that don't rely on Apple Pay. Yes. Though they agree to give a cut. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so I think it is like, I think, like if you use Apple Pay, you pay your processing fees to Apple. Yeah. And if you don't, you owe them a percentage. 30%, by the way, also, I'm pretty sure. So. Sheesh. And you think of everyone that, how many people play Fortnite? Everyone I know has played Fortnite at least once. Right. And so and many of them subscribe every month to the, I forget what it's called anyway. It's 10 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. So it's like. To give up thirty percent of that over the amount of people that play is a lot of money. Yeah, for for just being a service of hosting, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, okay, but yeah. Fortnite, like, well, Epic still had to pay the developers to make the app. All all Apple does is host it yeah. on their app store. Yeah, like that's all they offer. Like that's their only too. service. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Wow. The more you know. Go off Fortnite. I love that. Well, this will all kind of. M- Melds well together because Apple and Twitter are going toe to toe because Apple is looking at is thinking about dropping Twitter from the App Store. I feel like this is something Elon Musk would welcome. Like oh, I feel like he's just the type of guy that'd be like, okay. I almost think he'd be daring them too because it's going to give him an excuse to make his own phone. Oh, I think that's what would end up happening. It would be like a Tesla phone. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Elon did he already Musk. talk about that? I thought he did. Yeah, as soon as I think he did. He I think he leaked it himself for sure. He's such a meme. Yeah. Uh from the post millennial, Elon Musk says Apple's threatening to pull Twitter from the App Store. You scroll on down. Earlier this week, an activist at Washington Post journalist uh, sorry. Earlier this week, an activist Washington Post journalist demanded that Apple and Google pull Twitter from their app stores and claim that the LGBTQ community and other marginalized communities stand to suffer the most harm from this free speech plans for the platform. Elon Musk's tweet says Apple has also threatened to withhold Twitter from its app store, but won't tell us why. He he he. Uh, Musk issued a number of posts on Monday calling out the tech giant and questioning why they hate free speech in America. Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate free speech? Why do they hate? Sorry. Do they hate free speech in America? Musk asked questioning in a follow-up tweet. What's going on here? Tim Cook. So yeah. Oof. And like I saw a tweet from Elon. This is actually recent. This came from today where he was at the Apple campus. Oh. Um, and he just, what the tweet said was thanks Tim Cook for taking me around Apple's beautiful HQ. So uh, the follow-up tweet says, good conversation, among other things. We resolved the misunderstanding about Twitter potentially being removed from the App Store. Tim was clear that Apple never considered doing so. Hmm. Interesting. That's it. weird. <laughs> yeah. That is really odd. Yeah, why was he, like, then I, so then my mind goes, why are you so quick to just, you never give anyone else a free pass. Right. Like, he's not the type to really, like, he'll stick to his guns. Wait, Tim Cook? No, Elon Musk. Oh, Elon. So to me, like to have tweeted, Apple is doing this, mm-hmm. and then say he was never thinking of doing that. No, that's what they claim they said. That's, that's what, what Apple claims they said. Yeah, that's what. So Elon was saying that's what Tim said that he ne- he was never considering it. Right. Yeah. But didn't Elon Musk say that on a tweet here that Apple's going to do that? Yeah, that's what he was getting from Apple. That's why he was like confused. Right. So who was telling him if it wasn't Tim Cook? Exactly. Weird. That's what I wanted. Like it's like someone said it then. Yeah. Someone said it. I'm like, gee. I wonder what it feels like to just get a meeting with Tim Cook because you want one. Yeah. <laughs> That's a probably a, a, a cool place to be in life. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I need a meeting with uh yeah, what what president of what company? I bet he could get a meeting with anyone, yeah, I think. Easily. With anyone you wanted. Exactly. That's pretty cool. It's iconic. And uh so I that, I thought that was interesting that even Apple was considering, possibly considering dropping Twitter because of what's going on on the platform. Okay, what what has been your thought? What what do you think is going on on Twitter? Um, I think people are being allowed to speak freely. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a specific ideological faction that doesn't like that. Mm-hmm. And they're claiming it's hate speech. Mm-hmm. Um, and sure, obviously there's going to be a bunch of trolls and crazy people online that happens. Um, but like, I don't, I'm not for my, for me, I've, for my personal experience, I'm not seeing that. I'm just seeing a more, as I said last week, there's more of a battle of ideas on the platform now than there was before. Yeah. That's all I'm seeing as well. Like my experience generally hasn't changed, Mm -hmm. but I just think there's more content. Like I just feel like there's more now on Twitter, but I mean, their friggin' monthly active users are spiking. Yeah. So like people are coming back. It feels like, yeah, exactly. I'm one of those. Like I, like I just, I feel so passive on the platform because it's just so, it's such a cesspool of just the same thought process. Yeah. It uh, was just like, like, uh, what, like stagnant, toxic environment. Yeah. That, and it was just ended up people like, you know, who end up devouring each other at the end of the day. Right. You, there gets to a point where you're, you're not, um, you haven't been pushed down enough. Yes. There's always another layer. It's like, well, you're okay. You're gay. Okay. Well, well, I'm gay and black. Well, I'm gay, black, and transgender. Like it's just like it keeps going to the point where you they the circle of acceptable people gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I was seeing on Twitter. Where it's just like there's people that are just being full on attacked. Or I'm like, they two years ago they wouldn't have been attacked for their uh, for their identity. Why are they being attacked now? So. Dude, uh, LinkedIn is giving me similar feels lately. Oh, really? LinkedIn has also, in in a way, it's just rather than obviously based on, it's more based on, I guess you call like key opinion mm-hmm. leaders or whatever, like people, and, and, and they just are so concrete in their stance that if anyone comments with a differing opinion, they will literally reply back to them and say no. Like, <laughs> like they, and there's there's joint connections that you and I have who do this, and it's quite interesting to watch where they're just like, they are right. And that's it. Mm. Yeah. I got to get back to the LinkedIn at some point. It's just, yeah, it's interesting to watch, but yeah. I, I, like, in the same way, it's like, there should be dialogue. Like someone's allowed to challenge you. Yeah. To, you, you know, well, it comes back to the whole thing that happened with a uh, yay on Timcast. Like it's important. Like I've seen a couple occasions when people get like just ostracized from their friend group or their families they go to dark places and they don't often become better people. Um, Absolutely right. It's good to actually bring their ideas to the light so that we can help them. And, yes. You know, and let the best idea ever win at the end of the day. Like, and that's the thing. That's why, I mean, Tim cast got, or Tim got wrecked um, that when the people got wind that he was bringing Kanye on, mm. it's like, how dare you? He's like, we're going to talk. And we're going to have a battle of ideas. I think that's what people should be doing. Yes. You know? And, yeah. And then when it got a little too hot for Kanye, he left. <laughs> you know, he couldn't He couldn't debate him. Yeah. So, here we are. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I just, I guess I can't relate to just wanting to leave like that. Like, it's like, you know, you can't have such strong opinions and then leave. Yeah. Like you can't say those sorts of things and then leave when it gets hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it's not right. Yeah, and so I mean, for me, like I don't really know much about this Fuentes guy. I've heard a lot about him, but I don't. I've actually never seen his content. That's but. who Kalani brought with him to the lunch Trump. with Trump. Trump. But yeah. Trump also brought one of his presidential advisors with him as well, right? Yeah. Apparently that was just like a gong show, right? That's what they're saying. It was just an absolute mess. Yeah, and well, apparently, so Trump didn't know this Fuentes guys was showing up. No, that was a surprise. Yeah, and and so I, I, I'm just that's why I wish they could have gotten into that on the on that interview. Mm. So I, I'm dying to know what happened that that lunch because it got heated. Apparently, and it hasn't been good for Trump either since that hell happened. Oh like, really? A lot of people on the right are like tearing up Trump over that. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just there's some that are just mad that he gave Kanye a platform, and the fact it went sour has gotten another group group of like conservatives like upset that he's not listening to Kanye and the, and the other so oh. just like, oh baby, give me a break. Literally, you can split it down like even within conservatism, there's two sides to everything. Yeah. The people that didn't want him to platform and the people that do. So it's just like, you can never please everyone. No. You can never. 
Especially not nowadays, that's for sure. Yeah. So that's kind of what's going on um, with that. And I think this kind of moves us well into uh, what, what Tim Cook's doing here. Mm. So he de- deals this whole thing with Elon. Let's talk about what Tim did in China. Oh, let's. So obviously we've been talking about these protests that have been erupting. Oh, dude, I saw this. This made me so angry. Disgusting. So I'm so angry. From The Guardian. Apple limits airdrop on iPhones in China after file sharing feature was used by protesters. How dare they? Because you don't need someone's phone number. As long as it's on public, you can send anyone anything. Apple has limited file sharing features on iPhones in China a month after reports that anti-government protesters were using the function to share digital leaflets with strangers. Under the update to the airdrop function released on Thursday, iPhone users in China can only opt in to receive files from non-contacts during a 10-minute window before it automatically shuts off. The feature did not previously have a time limit. The update makes it virtually impossible to receive unexpected files from strangers. That made me so... That was like their one thing. Like, the, the, it's so it's already so hard to communicate in China without being seen by the government. Yeah. And then Apple... Clearly, like we just read this thing about how they, the, the soul of people is in their whatever. It's like, and then you do this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why? And we'll never know why. No one will ever answer this. They'll say it was for some reason. What other reason could it be? Money. Exactly right. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you got, they, they, they will Apple. make the cost of making iPhones more expensive. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. We can't have that happen. Yeah, can't have that. <laughs> well, yeah, they're already down. Like, what was it? I think the numbers they're down something, some crazy number around sixty thousand, six hundred thousand, like iPhones because of what's going on over there. So, well, like, they want to schedule. stop production of the fourteen Pro Max, I think, because people just aren't buying them either. Yeah. So, yeah. like, Apple's money is important to mm-hmm. Apple right now. Exactly, and so you have the Chinese government, the CCP, who've um, you know, they have a stranglehold in that country, obviously. And and in this one. Yeah. Or America rather. <laughs> True. Uh, and too. Canada yeah, too, yeah. really. They lead our country apparently. Yeah. Um and and so China's like, all right, you know, if you want to keep making stuff here, better make sure you cut off those protesters. Yeah. I'm like, okay, sir. I wonder, do you think that the CCP has a backdoor into iMessage. They do. Oh, that was uh, that was an issue back in 2013. Oh, great. Because um, I know the FBI does. Yeah, that took some in time. In America, though. yeah, that took a long time. Yeah, that was actually where the debate was back in 2013, um, because FBI was asking, uh-huh. and Apple said no, and they're just like, "Well, you let China do it." And everyone's like, "You let who do what?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the heck, you know? And uh, and so eventually, yeah, like since the Trump days. Now, FBI has access to the backdoor access to Apple stuff, but yeah. yeah it's weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like, imagine you have no viable way to communicate. Because pri- I would say, not that I have this r- rushing urge to communicate privately, but a part of me likes to have some sort of privacy, mm-hmm. or at least the thought of it. You, 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 there's, you can't even think of privacy in, in China anymore. No. Like, there's none, right? Like, I mean, you look at the amount of two cameras for every one citizen there's yeah. one point some odd billion people in china yeah. their camera budget is huge like yeah i'm cu- i'm curious how that all works it's kind of nuts how they track everybody that's facial recognition like swiping in and out certain businesses yikes yikes and like that the the, the, the apartment building man like they're nailing doors shut yeah <laughs> they're drilling people's doors shut yeah it's kind of unbelievable and so when you see the scenes you know of explosion we're gonna get into it here soon yeah um there's a lot going on dude so it's nuts um yeah i was just jump into the d- descent in china stuff China is absolutely exploding right now. Large protests have broken out across the country. And the significance of this cannot be understated because this is their first national protest since 1989. And people fear what happened then might happen again. New shocking footage shows people chanting phrases like down with Xi Jinping, down with the CCP, and give me freedom or give me death. And this is coming out of a country where political criticism is extremely dangerous and risk being imprisoned for doing so. Now this outrage is largely in response to China's harsh lockdowns 
and there is zero, you know what, tolerance policy. Meaning entire regions with thousands of people can be forced into lockdown over only a handful of cases. And things reached a boiling point when 10 people died in an apartment fire a couple of days ago. But locals are blaming their death on lockdown restrictions preventing them from escaping and or being rescued. Things at this point could escalate very quickly, but of course, as always, I'll keep you guys updated. Do you think if uh, the day were to come where the CCP and President Xi were to be overtaken or forced to step down, how do you think he's going to go out? A blaze of glory. A hundred percent. Yeah. He will absolutely make sure it's unlivable for anyone else after him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's like exactly This isn't going to end well no matter what. No. Uh, yeah, seeing all everything kind of kind of take place in China – um, in various places and seeing what they've done to people. Um, we've talked about it on the show for a while and, uh, and I'm, I'm happy, as I've said before, I'm happy to see the people rise up. I know it's not easy. Um, they're going to face some people face death over this, uh, or some oh, yeah. serious persecution. Um, and I think the issue I have, uh, with it is just seeing, um, I, I'm, I, what troubles me is the mixture of emotions I'm seeing here. Mm. You know, there's like some people are just like, yeah, man, fight, fight for your freedom, which is awesome. I agree with it. We won't get into the criticism or the hip- hypocrisy of some of the statements, but you know, it's good to see. And there's some people who are just like, yeah, they, they, like COVID's bad. Like the people should stay in their homes. And I'm like, <laughs> bro, what? Ugh. Like, like it just like it is, appalling to me to see how far people are willing to just like simp for the ccp and simp for covid yeah like come on man like how long is it re- like really really like freaking tim Busquet, man he's still going off about covid cases and stuff like that i'm like bro like like sing a new song please like gg dude it is interesting and what i find even more interesting is it's like the loudest mouths about why what's happening in China is okay are people who have absolutely no idea what communism really does. Um, They have no idea how people like this can get pushed to a point like this. Like this is not like their initial reaction. This is the reaction of the people who have been abused for two years going on three in March. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I guess it's already technically. Oh yeah, this is over three years for yeah, China. Yeah, yeah, or over two years. Oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Starting like December of twenty twenty for them. No, no November no, tw- no, of twenty nineteen. Oh t- yeah, sorry, dude. This is three years. Oh, you're right. It is holy smokes, dude. It's three years. Geez. We're going to twenty twenty three. Can you believe it? This is what I mean. I feel like I haven't been able to breathe since March of twenty twenty. Like there's this lapse in my memory. It's this. Like, 2017 is three years ago, but it's not. Right. It's not. It's six years ago now. Right. There's no way. You, you could you could totally gaslight me into believe 2017 was three years ago. Yes. You could totally do it. Because the last three years have been, you've been in fight or flight mode for the last three years. I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of fighting. Lots of fighting. Yeah. And just seeing it is draining. Uh, you know, it's like the civil unrest that exists in the entire world is it's hard to be hopeful 24 yeah. seven. And so then you do that, you know, over a multitude of years, it's like, there's like a, a, a like if it was like a roll of film, it's like it ends in 2020 and it has to pick back up at some point. Like right. the normal has to, it has to, mm-hmm. you know, you cannot end the film like this, right. you know, <laughs> And I agree with it. I just think we're at the point where the pandemic revealed a lot for people in just all the holes in our society. Oh, yeah. And I just don't think there's any coming back from it at this point. Certainly so. The The dream of returning to normal that I had in like April of 2020 when it was like two weeks to stop the curve. Yeah. It, it, if, if within six months of COVID we had returned to normal, yeah. it would have returned to actual, like just, just like it was before. Yeah. It's so far gone now that there is no the new there's a new normal and i used to hate that term but it's true like there, the, the life as it was in 2019 is not how we will proceed no 
that said, it's like, what? So what is the driving force? Like, it can't, COVID. It can't be COVID. Like, you know, they, we're we're gonna get sick. Like, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I don't understand how it's like the the fight. The fight for the fight is like, you could get sick. Yeah. And I could die at thirty, so I might as well make the next seven years good. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. So it's like what? What? Yeah. Uh, there's something. I'm I'm impending doom no matter what. I'm not making it to here alive. So why should I wait? Mm. You know. Fair. Like I just don't. I and I can't think of a good reason to wait anymore. Yeah, and I agree with it. Man. I could. Th- there was a time where it was the the for health reasons it terrified me. Mm-hmm. It was it's a it was a deadly disease. I can't doubt that it it was. But to me, it's like I've done everything I can to protect myself. I, I'm good. Yeah, I have to be good. You also get to the point where it's like, you know, it, it's definitely a tough virus, and you know, it depends on who you are and what you are. But like, it's it's not Ebola. You it's know, not a, it's not Ebola. Like, it's not any of these other horrendous viruses where you actually are gonna die if you get it. Like, highly gonna get. Like, yeah. you know, there's yeah, there's death for some people, but like you. It's, it's a small percentage compared to like the viral flu. Yeah. And so that's kind of where like the issue comes in is like you, you've essentially taken away people's livelihoods. You've probably killed more people by locking them down than you have saved them from the virus. Um, and that's kind of, I think that's where I got to uh, probably about 2021 where I was just like, I'm not doing this anymore, man. Um, this is like crazy. And then when we started, actually, no, it would have been, sorry, it would have been like probably, uh, no, it would, yeah, it would have been 2021 because that's when we started in, introducing all the vax passes and stuff. And that's yes. when, like, when that got instituted, that was like my, the biggest wake up call for me. I was like, are we really doing this? Like, this is happening. I mean, we're all, we're all going along with it. Like, yeah, this is a great idea. Like, okay. Uh, yeah. weird. Yep. You know, and it's just, the 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 carnivals continue to go on and so or sorry the uh, merry-go-round has continued on and that's how i feel it just feels like it's going in circles at this point and for like at least in like my personal life like it, it can't like i look at what covid did and i let my mental health slip i let my physical health slip like 100 percent, there are things that i used to do every day that got taken away from me that had an effect on me i could sit at home and drink whenever i wanted on like FaceTime with friends, I could smoke weed whenever I wanted. And it's like, what am I doing? Right. What is going on? This is not how I used to live before mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, now I have, it's now it's going on so long. I have to train myself out of it. Yeah. And it's just like, it can't, can't go on. It's not, no matter what I'm, go, it's, I'm going to get sick. Mm-hmm. Choose your sick, I guess. Yeah. And it's like, am I afraid of something that I can't see that I may get? Or am I afraid of the way that I'm killing myself by drinking, eating, not doing... Uh, what What should I be more scared of? Right. I can stop one, mm-hmm. but I have to piss people off on this side to do it. Right. True. Yeah. True. This also reminds me of, um, I think it's the second... So if we do this link here, this was an interesting link I saw. Pretty sure uh, we Dude. people got their banks frozen over something like that over here. Dude, President Xi's gonna want the friggin' heads off of these people yeah. soon. It's like <laughs> they're gonna be a bounty on them, hundred percent. But it was just like that was like uh, it was. I hope they burn it down before he can. You got hundred percent. Fight the power. <laughs> yeah, dude. let the people win. Let them do it on their accord. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I was. Uh, yeah, when I saw this video and I just heard the the horns, it like it actually produced like a visceral reaction in me. It's From, like fight or flight times two. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, it's like uh, honking. What's going on? You know, and uh, and it was it was intriguing to me. Um, about a week separated from the EA inquiry, Trudeau gets up and he's like, "Yeah, we support." 
the protesters in China. Oh, <laughs> gag like, me. Come on. I was like, I mean, true. Like, I'm glad you support them. Um, but I but you're you, a fraud. But I also <laughs> wish you supported them here, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what was... Dude, it's like... This is what I mean. It's like, I haven't been at peace in three years. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like, this is like... There's just always something where I'm like... It's like being gaslit for three years and they're thinking, like... It's just this whole picking a side thing, like how Trudeau has picked a side, we'll say quote unquote, which means he has to say certain things about certain things, but then not about other things that involve non-Canadians. But he picks the good side for the non-Canadians where it's like, oh, you're, you're down for protesting that involves honking your vehicle in the middle of a city and um, literally burning it down, flipping cars throwing things at people it's like violence you're good Mm -hmm. but we had a fairly non-violent car honking protest in canada and christia freeland's passing around notes to whom she doesn't remember who wrote it about we need to designate them as terrorists what's going on in camp what's going on (laughs) she said i don't know it was to dave right is that who the note was made out to dave she said i'll have to look at my notes and the guy said, well, they're right here. Yeah. <laughs> and she goes, I don't know what Dave that is. <laughs> you wrote the note. He said, what is Dave's last name? And she said, well, I'd have to check. Yeah. <laughs> check what? Tell the truth. What happened? Just, like, you got caught. It's okay. You're going to lose your job. Yeah. You got caught. Own it. Yeah. Dog. It's so <laughs> frustrating to see those sorts of things. And it's just like, ah, oh, man. Like, we are just the, the, the chess pieces in this game. Mm -hmm. we are the chess pieces that the hollywood socialites are playing with yeah this is a game Mm -hmm. and we're not that's why i say it's like entrepreneurship is the only way i see out what i mean by that is like in the current climate if you're not rich you're in the wrong part of the game and i don't like this part of the game (laughs) yeah yeah it's uh because the elites are not no none of the elites are worried right now no no the no, none of this is tr- it's all trivial to them yeah, they, their life is going to go on just the same no problem it's just it's just us it's just the middle uh, working middle class and below that is just getting it yeah yeah getting shafted and i think that was like for me i remember like i mean oh yeah we talked about this on the show it was my realization uh going from it was going yeah it was it was this time last year yeah that's right um, when we were c- coming back from a uh, vacation, uh, yeah, sure. And I remember just going down to Maine, going to Toronto and just like lockdowns were just like not really a thing. People were out living their lives. Uh, specifically when I was down in the States, there was no masks, there was no nothing. And I was like, well, how's this? This is a great life. And I came back here and like, there was no rules about meeting. But none of my friends wanted to hang out because they're scared of COVID. And that's that was the beginning of the end for me. Like that was like that was the cliff for me. Mm. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. This is craziness. Yeah. And I like I mean, I was pretty veiled about it for the, for the most part. My friends who know me knew how I felt about it. Uh on the show I was a little bit more veiled at the time. But mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie, when those freaking truckers went out, I was like, Something's gotta give. I can't keep doing this. This is nuts. And uh, I was stoked about it, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, and then seeing kind of over the year, I guess a year and a half now since it all happened. Or no, coming up on a year. No, coming sorry. up on, yeah, yeah, a little less than a year. So you again, the time. There's no timeline. Yeah, there's literally no timeline. Um, it's been interesting kind of seeing how both sides of the aisle have fe- felt about that. Some people believe they're Nazi terrorists. And others were just like, they're just people who just were getting fed up with being locked down. Yep. So... Yeah, yeah, man, it's like, yeah, it's such a good way to put it. It's like, there's no timeline. There's no, I, yeah, like, a, what does a year go to me? I don't even, I don't even remember what was happening last December first. Not a clue. Yeah, sure. We were, we were just wrapping the show up. Like, uh, yeah, like we did. I, I remember doing the giveaways. Like, I have core memories. Right. I have core memories, like Christmas parade with Hannah, like right. doing that. Like, there's core things I remember. But 
every day in between. I, I, I don't even remember things from weeks, months ago that are not like riveting yeah. because I'm just like, I just want peace. Yeah. And we stand with our homies in China doing that. Just that. Cause it's, listen, it's not peaceful at the moment, but They're not. you need that. It's like, I can only imagine like, obviously like I wasn't happy with what were, was happening here. Um, and what was happening over there is was what we dealt with times 10 and it's like um, and for the whole life yeah and 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 literally no real stoppage to it for three years so um i'd be losing it too it's crazy it's so yeah it's like looking back to i guess yeah it was march 2020 how the like it's it's so different now like covid just feels different Everything about it feels different. People's, the division feels different. It's it, it just like, it's like a topic I just, other other than on here when things come up, like, I try really just to not talk about COVID. Yeah. Like, I really like. And we've done a whole episode on now. <laughs> well, because there's stuff that, I mean, it's like, this stuff is, yeah. well, China says it's mm-hmm. for COVID, yeah. but whatever it is really for, we'll never know, but. Like there are still people who like when you hang out with them, like they just want to give you news updates about COVID. You have those friends? Do, not anymore. Hundred <laughs> percent, not anymore. And it's like I can't do that. You're, you're like, no, I can't do it. Explains why Dalton doesn't text me back anymore. Dude, not true. I, I, I give him, I give him t- uh, daily COVID updates. Imagine, <laughs> that. dude. If you did, I would block you. <laughs> This show would be done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's just yeah, it's just interesting. Like to me, like it has stopped consuming that much of my yeah. life. Good. And it should have. Yeah, now what's consuming me is like the aftermath. Like this like the ripple that's yeah. a good like how long is this ripple effect going to be? Yeah. Yeah. I think that well the thing that really I'm worried about is just yeah, as you've you've kind of alluded to, is the um civil unrest that's gonna come from this for years. You yeah, know, just and the divide that's happened. Yes, that is like terrifying. And then I wonder what effect does that have on mm, like communities? What effect does it have on economy? My money specifically, like my fine as a family, as like what does that mean for everyone in my life financially? Like what does this look like? And, you know, groceries are getting expensive and um, power costs more and heat costs more. And I'm like, what, what's going on? Like, there's a bagel shortage in grocery stores. Like, what? Dude, I saw this today on the news. And Mr. Whatever makes Little Debbie's. You know what I mean? But like the confectionery, like sweets oh, from yeah. the store. This isn't a huge deal, but it's, a, I think, a warning sign. They've pulled out of Canada completely. And they're distributed by a big company like Mr. Christie or like a, like right. they're a, or like Mondelez International, which is like a Kraft Foods brand, I think. Like. When when company and like Kraft Foods controls like almost all of what we eat, right? <laughs> like, yeah, they do. <laughs> so it's like when companies like that start pulling things from Canada because they have a bigger market to serve. It's like, are we going to get left behind? And then what? We're not Trudeau trying to make it illegal for farmers to farm here, yeah. and people are no longer sending us food. What will we do then? <laughs> then what? Fishermen are only met with red tape. Farmers are only met with red tape. Now international supplies weakening because they need to send it other wo- other places what what do we do <laughs> make your own i guess yeah it's like and so then it's like then i think well dude this is like getting conspiracy land but these are things that go through my mind where i'm like is this world economic form stuff like is this is this really happening where it's like the world there's like the world economic form the world there's like five or six conglomerations that are all working together and it's like the international bank of settlements and the international like thing for treaties and organizations and and, and in the world health organization, like all these things that are trying to go for a central population. And then I think, is that why there's like this insane ability for um, real estate developers to like build these huge buildings, but it's impossible for a family to buy a home. Like how is it so easy to build something so big but it's so hard to obtain just a small home right like do they want us in all these buildings so we don't have ways to rely on our own 
means and like we have to have everything done for us when we're in these big buildings all living next to each other right and then i thought why is it so hard for someone to just go buy a home but it's so easy i thought i have to look into this and then finally someone just outright said the answer it was a youtube video about a real estate developer in toronto and in ontario rather and they were talking about how well like the ford government will tell the public that we're not going to be developing this certain area like this is staying as green land and then he tells all his developer buddies, I lied. We're going to develop this land. Start buying it. Once his friends have bought all the land, he issues building permits to them. So then I realized, especially someone who's involved in real estate, I'm not playing with an equal deck. All right. I'm not playing with an equal deck. And so I should start playing like it's not an equal deck. Clearly, that's the only way you can win. It is 100% a game. Everything is a game. Yeah. It is all about who you know. These real estate developers are just being told, yep, buy here, buy here, buy here. You ever drive by like downtown Halifax or when you're in Toronto and like you look at buildings that are right by the ACC Mm -hmm. and you think, how did that person know way back when to buy land here? Like, how did they get so lucky? It's not luck. Then there's no such thing as luck. No. None of this is luck. These developers who just like Larry Utech, three families bought up all the land in Larry Utech basically. How did they know? And now all of a sudden there's this huge community, Bedford South, sprawling. How did they all know to buy land there? There's no, it's not luck. Right. That's crazy, man. Yeah, dudes. We're, this, get, get your own. If you have an opportunity to get it, take it. Yeah. Because George. someone else will take it, take it from you. Yeah. People are savage out here. It's dog eat dog. And it's like, you might as well, if you can, if you can do it, you got to get ahead somehow in this like time. Right. <laughs> yeah, especially this time. Like, things are so transitory. Yeah. And uh, if you can snag some stuff now in this time, you'll be doing well. Yeah, like, if you have a moral compass that's telling you, I have inside information, I shouldn't use it, use it. <laughs> right now. But before someone else does. A hundred percent. Like, you have, to, you have to do something to win. Right. There's no chance for the little guy. It's Or at least, le- at least decreasing in the ability to have a chance, you know, yeah. I would say. And also, don't listen to your uncle on st- stock advice that he's got an in- inside tip. Oh. Don't listen to that. That's not the inside tip we mean. But don't go to, honestly, don't go to a financial advisor either. Right. You know, I would say you're probably better off doing it yourself, mm. uh, in my opinion. Uh, have you had good experience with, like, financial advisors, like, at a bank? No. Me either. I just feel like I'm constantly being sold to. Yeah. And they're like, do you just want like a fixed R? Someone, someone sold me a five year GIC that still isn't matured yet. <laughs> I was like 17, 18, and I was sold a $500 GIC. And they're like, this could be big. Dog, it's worth $507 now. $507, dog. I put 500 bucks and I got seven bucks back. <laughs> With inflation, what do I have? 500 bucks. <laughs> you lost. <laughs> yeah. You lost money. Yo. Dude. Yeah. That's so it's, crazy. It's like, uh, bam, you, like to be well that's rude but it is kind of true to to be a, a like a financial advisor be like you really just need a grade 12 there's like there's not really anything special about them mm-hmm. so it's like you know if you go talk to like an investment banker who has like gone to business school and things like that i suppose that's a little different but like just like the typical financial advisor they're not this world-renowned stock trader, they're this, they, they make commissions on what they sell you. Right. You know? So it's like when you're in there to buy investments, why are they also pitching you a credit card? Right. <laughs> right. Because they get paid. <laughs> you know? So it's, uh, I don't know. I just take the take a grain of salt with anyone who's being paid to sell you things. Yeah, I remember going into one and... Uh, and, and it's I was, always CIBC. <laughs> it's always... <laughs> well, well, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's uh, well, I was like... Cause, Kelsey really wanted to get a financial advisor. And I was like, I was like, you wait. I was like, we'll, we'll meet with them. Yeah. And their solution to you will be just to invest in the fund that their bank is associated with. Yes. Whatever index fund. Yeah. That, yes. And, you know, hour into the meeting, it's like, yeah, we'll get you to invest into RBC fund. And this and that. I was like, hmm, cool. Oh, all right. Cool. Yeah, Sounds good. Why? Yeah. Why not something else? I feel yeah. like there's... Is there any other funds that will produce something better? Yeah. Oh, no. It just It's strictly RBC. You got it. What if I picked uh, this was my risk appetite? Would the funds change? 
Or is there just higher risk RBC funds? Yeah. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you know what oh, I got mean? it. Got yeah. it. Right. Two points I want to make, and I don't want to forget either of them, so I'm going to try not to. One is that um, if you have the ability to pay someone at like a wealth management company, those are people who are trained to really make decisions, and they're you pay them. Yeah. They don't need to make money off selling you anything. Yeah. You pay them. Um, so that's really that's a real financial advisor. Like here, there's a company called like Asante Wealth Management. Even man, like I've done investments with Manulife, and they completely diversify uh, diversify a portfolio, and they don't get paid after that. You just pay them. Okay. So it's, I feel better doing it like that. Number two, did you see that Royal Bank bought all the Canadian branches of HSBC? No. They bought every Canadian branch of the HSBC bank. What happened to HSBC? Well, HSBC is an international bank. Yeah. So the HSBC will continue on in other countries. But in Canada, within the next year, they'll be transitioned to RBCs. Gee. They bought all their clients. They bought, it was over like $120 billion in assets or something. Okay. So. No, it was like some odd hundred million in assets and they paid like some odd billion dollars for the deal. Like, I'm curious why HSBC is pulling out. It's been for sale for a year. Their Canadian division has been yeah. for sale for a year. Wow. Yeah. The, it, the reason said that there is an insurance company that's a major shareholder in HSBC as a whole who's demanding profits, and the Canadian division has been slowing them down. Yeah. Damn. Again, HSBC being the international bank for, is it the UK or is it for uh, Asia? Actually, no, let's, let's clarify this one. Um, I thought it was a UK bank. Either way. It is overseas. I don't think it's American. No, it is, yeah. it's uh, definitely yeah. international. Yeah. Uh, HSBC. There's also got to be conspiracy theory why there are logos on all of the gangways at the airport. <laughs> why is it always their logo? Good question. Yeah, at every airport in the world. Uh, Asia. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Shanghai banking. So, yeah, and the insurance company that's putting this pressure on them to pull out of Canada is a Chinese-owned insurance company. Hmm. Interesting. But RBC is saying it's a great way for them to diversify. HSBC has a lot of um, commercial banking clients. Right. So to RBC, it's like a good way to get commercial clients in their in their portfolio. portfolio. Um, but it's always like HSBC is not one of the big five, but it's a big bank. Yeah. When banks start buying banks, I would get a little nervous. Just like, uh, you don't want any one bank to, and there is a commission that makes sure banks cannot own too much, but. Yeah. We all, at all there's only five, five banks. ways. Yeah, five <laughs> banks. What do you mean not own too much? And then people say, well, I bank with Tangerine, Doggy Bank, Scotia Bank. Yeah. <laughs> Just disguised as. <laughs> They'll even play it so well that a Tangerine card will not work at a Scotia Bank. Dude, yeah. that's ill. Um, yeah. <laughs> I remember, I remember I showed up at a teller one day. They told me, Tanji told me to go to a teller. I was like, cool, Scotiabank teller. I showed up. There's like, yeah, we don't, we can't process that. Nope. I was like, what? <laughs> you remember PC Financial, which is now yeah. Simply Financial? Yeah. I went into the Barrington Street location, went to the teller. And I was like, I just need to take out cash, but I need them in 50s. And she looked at my card and she was like, this is a CIBC. And I was like, uh, it says buy CIBC on the back. And she was like, that's PC Financial. I was like, am I poor? <laughs> Like she was like judging me. I was like, I'm a student and it's free banking. What's the big deal? Yeah. She was like, go take out twenties at the machine and come back here and I'll give them to you in fifties. I was like, okay, sorry for disturbing you <laughs> with my poorness. Yeah, <laughs> like I was like, that's so rude. Dang, um, bro, you really upset her. Yeah, man. Um, but it's it, it, anything money related in this country. I just like am so nervous of. Like I'm just so. Or so much, well, so much infrastructure is controlled by so few people. It's not right. Like, <laughs> go to a, like, when I was in New York recently, I was like, there's a different named bank on every corner. I, God only knows who's in control of that bank. And maybe I like it that way. Right. Maybe I like that that bank only has six clients. And I don't even know who the other six are. <laughs> That's none of my business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but to me, it's better than five banks controlling the entire country. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, okay, so you've burned, a, so you've burned a bridge at one. It's like, well, okay, you only have four more options. Yeah. And then you look at it and it's like, look on the shareholders list. And it's like, they all have very similar 
um, <laughs> people on their boards. Like the, and what I mean is like the, the people on their boards all kind of do similar things. And I'm like, dog, they are all in, it's like collusion. Yeah. Like what's going on? hundred <laughs> percent. You can just like, you just follow it to the top and it's like, Oh, the, it gets smaller. People who are getting yeah. involved. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And then just like at the top, there's just like the president of bell, <laughs> <laughs> the president of Dallas at the top. Yeah. Just, he's like, this is what a monopoly is. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we love this. I'm winning this game. Y'all. <laughs> yeah. I'm still, I need to, I'm actually looking to buy myself a copy of monopoly. Cause I want to feel like the president of bell. Dude, yeah. When you when you buy the two blue corners, it's like that must be what the CEO of Bell and Tells feel like every night. Yeah. Just like they got that shit on lock. They're like, yeah, CN. What are the Canadian ones like CN Tower? Yeah. Something's like, yeah, you won the game. Build a couple motels. Yeah. Because they all own real estate too, of course. True. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. There's a. You've ever seen the movie on McDonald's? Um, mm. I can't remember the name of it exactly, but it's like talking about how they're a real estate company right. before they're a, a burger company. It's like. Look at these phone companies. Look at their balance sheet. They're loaded in way more in way more ways than cash. Like they own real estate all over the country. Yeah, that's true. It's nuts. That's why every it, office building is an investment. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's what Rich Dad Poor Dad is saying. It's like if you are running a business, you are running a real estate company. Yes, don't rent your store. Yeah. Yes, a hundred percent. And it's like, yeah, like Bell will rent in malls. Because it's like you can't, maybe they can't buy them all. I'm yeah. sure they would try if they could. Yeah. But then look at Sobeys. Like Sobeys generally is in a plaza owned by Crombie Reit. If you look at the sign for the, it's who's the majority shareholder in Crombie? The Sobeys family. Oh, true. <laughs> you know, so it's like they are, the, the, yeah, they run a grocery store and they also own the entire other plaza with 50 tenants. They own malls. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Every Loblaws and Superstore across the country is a huge real estate development. What if, What is your been your thoughts on Jag Meat coming out against uh, Galen Weston? I thought it was appropriate. Mm -hmm. I mean, Galen Weston is kind of a snake. Yeah. So really, I thought that was that was actually kind of a good take. Right. Yeah. What did you think? Um, I think the content made sense. I yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. It was like it was a pretty logical flow. Absolutely. Yeah. I just like I just don't want to hear it from Jag Meat, but. Of course. Oh, hundred percent. The messenger was like kind of, but the eh. mess, but the message was, yeah, the message was, was good. Point. Yeah. hundred mm -hmm. percent. And like, um, uh, black Friday has been a good way of exposing this tactic. And it's like, cause people, people, and this is just the, the reality I think of being uh, broke right now is we're all on the hunt for a deal. Right. But it's like, <laughs> you'd rip up the sticker underneath and it was like the original price was six ninety nine. And on Black Friday, they marked it up to ten ninety nine to mark it down to six ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> it's like just by like the the arrow through it and the big red signs, like you just tricked everyone, and it sucks, dude. Uh, ever since he sent, showed me that video from the Shoppers Drug Mart, mm -hmm. every s place I've gone into, I've lifted up the sticker, see what the price was before they put the sales on, uh -huh. just to make sure. Oh yeah, and I uh, haven't seen anything sketchy yet, but I will say that was I was surprised at that kind of made it through like i think that was just a genuine mistake yeah but at, at these uh, at least in canada in what's loblaws superstore even though shoppers are is technically under that brand shoppers are each owned independently so it's like okay. a little different but um like every superstore it all goes right back up to the westons <laughs> like that's just right up to the top and they're just up there raking it in like they made more money in the last three years than you could even imagine or that you and it comes back to what we said on the show they were allowed to be open yeah the whole time there was never a a quibble about large chains being open yeah arthur's wasn't allowed to be open yeah was it with that and there's a their grocery store yeah up in hammond's plains there's a thing called kingswood market yeah. they're small he it's owned by a guy who lives in like the subdivision mm -hmm. like he, he lives in bedford i think he just he owns his own grocery store that would have not been permitted during covid why why like and then we watched the video today of how the ccp made women close her business for 30 days because she didn't follow covid protocols yeah had her mask down had her mask down so it's like well imagine how like much that would have devastated her that happened here <laughs> <laughs> people had to close their businesses here that happened here yeah and it's like well yeah there was government relief and so why do you think there's inflation why do you think now they created the problem so they could create the solution and they created the problem by saying we're fixing what's wrong. 
It's like, it's nuts. I think that's what upset me about the Jag Meat situation. Mm. Is this guy's coming out against Loblaws and Galen Weston about, you know, uh, union busting and profiteering. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, because you propped up the guy who allowed it to happen. Yeah. Like, you did this, Jag Meat. Like, shut up. I don't want to hear from you. Yeah. Like, you created this problem. You were, you or you didn't create it. You aided in creation of the problem. Well, yeah, I would say by not fighting against it, you're helping it. Yeah. yeah. The fact that he, you didn't speak up at all during COVID saying, hey, we should keep all local grocery stores open. You want to let the chains be open. Why? Yeah. Why? Literally why? Especially when it's like the people that work for chains generally hate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rightfully so. Yeah. <laughs> and generally the employees who work for a small locally owned store I have a better experience. So it's like, you, why not have cancel all big grocery stores and just why not let there be like a hundred small grocery stores? Why do we need like 10 big ones? Well, that was the thing that also frustrated me in terms of the logic of it all. We're going to shut you all down, but we're going to concentrate you to the small pockets of areas. Yeah. Like what? You're going to put us all into one big superstore like with uh, air circulating and everything like that. Oh, like it made no sense. And so it is again, that you use these situations throughout COVID that shows you all oh, the centralization of power is being, now more focused and more concentrated to a specific area and you're starting to see it plain as day so i mean we're here for it just kidding I'm yeah i'm like ah uh, no i wish i was the, <laughs> i wish i was the guy oh uh, yeah and there's a thing and you know what i can't uh, i listen i don't like alan weston 100 what he's doing is wrong but why should i expect him to change yeah. he won he finessed everybody yeah he really he did. won the game it's like he he did it so now he gets to reap the rewards. It's like we could have, you know, well, we couldn't have, but the government could have stopped it, and they didn't. So why should he give himself up? <laughs> I don't blame him. No, yeah, he's <laughs> suckers. Yeah, he won. It's like he, I, I got to respect it in some regard. Totally. But yeah. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's wrap up with one last story. Yeah, let's do it. So uh, so apparently Elon Musk has po- posted an alt-right anti-Semitic yes. tweet. Yeah, supposedly. What was this? Let's see. So this is like the tweet. The, the, well, this is a guy who's been complaining about Elon Musk. Pretty famous guy. His name is Moby. Okay. Handles l- the little idiot. Interesting. Don't know this guy's about. Apparently he's pretty famous. Okay. Um, this will be my last tweet. He says, last night Elon Musk posted an alt-right anti-Semitic meme, a fake CNN story, and an image of guns on his bedside table. Twitter's become a cesspool of racism, anti-Semitism, disinformation, and dim-witted alt-right hate. And it's time to leave. I hate people who announce their departure. Just leave. I do it all the time, man. Just uh, leave. I am at the grocery store. I tell the clerk, I'm out of here. It was good seeing you. Ugh. And then I tell the bartender, all right, I had enough to drink tonight. See ya. It's so embarrassing. I do the same thing on Twitter, too. Yeah, that's right. Every night. You gotta tuck in for the night. Yeah. Good night, Twitter. <laughs> good night, Twitter. Oh, GN. Um, yeah. So I was like, okay, what what anti Semitic t- meme did he post? Yeah. And so I just had to pull this up. Okay, let's see. This is it. Care about this particular? What's that say? Psyop. What's that mean? Um, I don't really want. Like, we can. Pay, we should probably pull up the definition. Yeah, let's just Google it. Yeah, what define a psyop for me, Philip? A lot of people have different definitions of what it is. So, a military operation performed by a unit specializing in psychological war oh so there's a lot of been people have been talking about a lot of psyops happening online through social media so he posts me a pepe i don't care about this particular psyop honestly <laughs> which no one really knew what he was referring to but it was a meme and and this was the anti-semitic so apparently i didn't i still i've heard this for years i still don't understand it uh but apparently pepe is a sign of anti-semitism and white supremacy uh, Philip, could you really? Clear? I used to print these around NSCC. <laughs> <So, laughs> for fun. <laughs> well, we we caught Dalton. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? So, like, Pepe has been around for a long time, but then it was—I don't know exactly when—but someone included Nazi symbols with Pepe in, like, Which a. Pepe? Just a bunch of different like images of like him wearing Nazi hot hats or whatever, and that just it spread. People started doing it, and <laughs> I'm like, it 
obviously is nothing of what Pepe actually stood for, but it was just like, all right, now there's a Nazi symbol with Pepe, so he's anti-Semitic now. Oh, he must be a convoy protester. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. So okay. that's why... I was wondering where it So be. someone had to leave or the from. app off of this? Yeah, someone man. Someone had to leave Twitter because of they, this. They made an announcement that they're leaving over this. Oh, yeah. Check and see if they tweeted again. Oh, true. Let's do it. Moby. My guy. Oh, no. That's oh, his, my God. Oh, you know what? Really He's a man one. of his word. Nice. Adopted but, son of John Waters since 1987. Vegan for life. 1.1 well, 1. 1 million followers. We'll, see, we'll check back in with him in about a month. Not the Dalai Lama. We'll see, we'll see if he makes a New Year's tweet. I don't like him. <laughs> But like, yeah, and then like Elon Musk posted a photo of like a revolver next to a bunch of Diet Coke cans. That was apparently a a thing for gamers. Oh, was it? Apparently that's a mock, uh, like a, oh, a model was. gun from You're a right. video game. Yeah. And he was like trying to like just get on the gamer side. Like I think by having a bunch of pop on his nightstand. Also, he's in America. Yeah. Americans drink Diet Coke and shoot guns. That's what Americans do. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> shoot. Yeah, you right. So I I, I, don't, I didn't get the big fuss with that. Like, is it because it's Elon Musk he can't have a gun? Nah, it's just like it, it's it. I think it's just melting the brains of these people. Like, it's for just everything. Just he does. He, I mean, he's he's the new Donald Trump. Like they yes. found, they found him, right? And so the, everything he does is apparently filled with hate. Well, so. everyone was like, wouldn't he have security? What does he need that for? He just wants to show his guns off on Twitter. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. Like, you allowed the Taliban to be on Twitter before yeah. when it was under the other ownership. Mm -hmm. So what's so wrong with Elon Musk trying off his gun? Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> kick the president off of the app and let the Taliban on it, and Elon Musk posts a picture of a gun, and it's a capital crime. I don't get it. True. <laughs> I just don't get it. Yeah, it's like it's been interesting watching just seeing everyone kind of melt down over every little thing that he's ever done on the app at this point. And as I said, I'm here for all of it. Because it's fun to see everyone kind of lose their minds. What I think is really fun is he just doesn't care. No. Let it burn. He literally could. I think if the app went to zero and died, he would be like, okay. He even said that in a tweet before he bought it. He's like. It's not, whatever. Yeah. Don't care. He thinks he can make it something great, but he's like. I'm it, prepared to destroy it in the process. Yeah. Because it's literally destroying us as a country. So. It's funny because Jack Dorsey now is working on something called Blue Sky. Right, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, Blue Sky or B Sky. I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyway, and its whole thing is like it's a social, well, it's not a social network because he always talks about how he didn't want Twitter to become a platform. He wanted to be a protocol. Right. And so now Jack's off doing a new project, which is protocol based social networking. Right. Whatever that looks like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um. I wonder if there's any collusion there. Like, mm. is this like should, is this to get Twitter up from being number one? No, because Jack and Elon, there's documented text between the two of them. Yeah. So who knows? Who knows is right, man. But dang, what an interesting show. That was a, to everything. That was a dang good yeah, show. Bro. Dude, that, was, that was interesting. But yeah, shout out to our, our Chinese homies. Keep up the fight. Um, be safe over there as best you can. Yeah, I'm like mm -hmm. I don't even it's know. Scary what sort of, I don't even know what sort of advice to give in this situation. Like I've never, I've never lived through something like this. No, definitely this not. A, didn't I say I texted the other night and I was like, "What are we living through?" Right. Like what? Uh, you know, it's like I didn't expect any of this. No. I was driving the other day and I was like, I remember when I was like 17, 18, and I was like, I thought that. Not even so. I thought I was, when I was like uh, 13, 14, I was like, I can't wait to grow up. Like, there's so many things I can do. I'll be able to drive. I'll be able to go to bars. I can travel on my own. I can have my own apartment. And now, all I have is depression. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. But it's true. It's just like, yeah, it's it's not all glitz and glam. It's like, you can live in the moment a little bit. And I'm trying to, like, learn to just live in the moment a little bit while... There's just everything's burning around you, but man, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Definitely. <laughs> oh I mean, that's like, that's the advice I'll give. I'll drop uh, for today. Is just enjoy your life, man. Enjoy, everybody, just enjoy your lives. Enjoy the moments. If something weird, quote unquote, brings you happiness, own it Please. with conviction. Own it. If it brings you joy, do it. Absolutely. And you're hurting no one. Do it. Do that. I love going for walks, man. I keep doing them. Yeah, let's freaking go. I remember. This is my last thing. I remember during the, the initial lockdown, 
and your walks were like a crime. And oh. you were you were like upset that that because there was a point we had to stay in your house. Yeah, I said screw you. Yeah, it's like you can't, you can't <laughs> walk around that. my subdivision. Yeah, what the heck? What? <laughs> That's crazy. That oh, was nuts. And then I had friends who was like, you, you did what? I know people were like I I remember I wanted to go drop cookies off to a friend. Like I was making cookies, and I was like, I can drop them line. They're like, Well, you're not allowed to drive. <laughs> uh, Says who? <laughs> it's not a crime. <laughs> what do you mean? I can't. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. As I said, uh, through that time, I took I took notice of who my friends are and who they aren't anymore, um, and what what people do when they're under duress. I realize those are people I will not be associating with going forward. So, truth. So here we are. So that was wild. So whatever it is you're doing, whether you be sticking it to the man, or oh. <laughs> There oh my it is. Gosh. <laughs> or um, posting memes on Twitter. Oh, Pepe. Oh. <laughs> or practicing free speech. Oh. Hey. Stay free, y'all. We love you. We're out of here. Peace.